What if I told you there's a CNC bit that can cut twice as fast, stay sharp twice as long, and actually have a 20% noise reduction? Well, that's what we're covering today. And that bit is the roughing bit. So today, we're breaking down the serrated roughing bit and how it can be a complete game changer for you and your CNC. So to illustrate this, let's talk about kitchen knives, right? Well, if you ever straighten out a CNC bit, it would look kind of like a kitchen knife. Well, this is your standard finisher right here, right? And so it's gonna cut just like a standard finisher does. A roughing bit looks a lot like this serrated knife right here. And you know, like me, on serrated knives, one, you rarely ever have to sharpen them, one, because they're a pain in the butt to sharpen, but two, it's because of the serrations on it, it's really hard for it to actually get dull. Well, that roughing bit works the exact same way. And so to illustrate this, let me blow it up. And this is kind of what that roughing bit looks like in my very first magic trick on camera. But when you look at it, it has all of these serrations on it, okay? The good thing about these serrations is that whenever it's making contact with the wood, unlike a finishing blade, this is having multiple different teeth contacted at different points. And so what that's doing is one, it's gonna cut down on the noise that's being made because you have all these little things that I call, they're like kind of tickling the wood, right? Whereas this one's kind of slapping it and slicing it like this knife would do right here. And so that's what a finisher would do. Another good thing about the rougher is that whenever you're cutting, just like a serrated blade, whenever it gets a little bit dull, you can keep going and going and going. Whenever a standard finisher gets dull, just like this kitchen knife, you have to sharpen it a ton. And if it gets dull, it's really just like, it's not cutting much at all, right? It's more or less just a butter knife. And so these finishers get dull a lot faster. And another thing to note is these smaller roughers didn't really exist until recently and never really been introduced into the hobbyist market. So these roughers have been around for years and years and years, but they're on the more industrialized equipment, metalworking equipment, woodworking, aluminum, stuff like that. And so they've been around and they're really nothing new, right? I mean, I run these 3 8 roughers right here. Ugh. On my CNC's all day long, I have half inch versions um, that are really long that do a lot of roughing work. But until recently, they just made it down to the hobby CNC market in this quarter inch and this eighth inch version. And the reason being is because hobby machines can now run fast enough to be able to keep up with what this rougher can do. So these boys and girls are meant to haul butt and run fast. So typical roughers have an extra flute in them as well. And so a, a usual finisher has two flutes. A rougher has three flutes, which automatically means it can run 50% faster just based on basic chip load. And so now you have a bit that can run longer because it's serrated, run faster because it has three flutes, and actually has a noise reduction quality about it. So there is some cons, but first, let's start running these bits to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of what a rougher compared to a finisher really does, and then we'll go over different uses and why you should use a rougher or why you should use a finisher over a rougher. Let's get right into it. So the first test we're gonna do is a sound test. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a standard upcut finisher into some Bamex, and we're actually going to measure on a decibel meter how high that sound gets. All right, we have our quarter inch upcut finisher in there, we have our decibel meter, and we're going to be running this at 200 inches a minute, 18,000 RPMs, and a .25 inch depth of cut.
that was dusty. So it looks like we had a max of 113 and an average of 106.4. So now let's put in that Golden Boy Upcut Rougher and see what it does. Let's go. So it just finished up. We had a max peak of 103.7 and an average of 96 and a half. Now I'm no decibel tologist or sound scientist. And so I don't know like what a decibel difference really means, but I can tell you standing here in person that that ear piercing teeth clenching scream <laughs> that did not exist with a rougher. Now the next thing I wanna show you is the chips of it. And so I have a finisher in this hand and the rougher in this hand. And remember when I said that bit kind of like tickles the material? Well, these chips, you know, you always hear the term chip load and you know, how big are your, your wood chips and all that. Why this is quieter is because it's not doing these big cuts or relatively big cuts like that finisher. It's coming in and just kind of tickling and you know all those serrations are cutting off little beady pieces at a time which just theoretically it's going to be quieter because of the sheer angle and all that stuff so with the sound test complete the next thing i want to show you guys is how fast these ruffers can go what i do want to show you today is the newest addition to our gold digger lineup the baby boy and this is an eighth inch upcut ruffer and this thing can absolutely fly for an eighth inch bit. So now we have our baby boy chalked up in the spindle here. We're going to do two different passes. This first one is gonna be on the top. We're gonna to be running this at 250 inches a minute at an eighth inch depth of cut. And we're gonna be cutting into just a normal piece of walnut right here. So this is just regular walnut, nothing too crazy. And we're gonna see if that baby boy can handle it. Then the next one, we'll do it even a little crazier. All right, we got the baby boy in there. Time to go 250 inches a minute. Let's go, baby! Look at that thing, man! And right here, right there. I'll check back. Did the whole thing, no problem. Boom, baby! I love it! I love it! All right, so it did that, no problem. The bit's not even hot. This next one, we're gonna go a quarter inch deep, which is twice the diameter of the bit. So an eighth inch bit going a quarter inch deep at 250 inches a minute. Let's go! Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah. So it's doing an 80% step over as well. There, that is so cool. Look at that thing haul butt, man. And that's an eighth inch bit. Gah! That was real speed. And most people don't even run a quarter inch bit that fast. So I, I'm showing you this to, to keep in context that like these bits, it's just meant to kind of speed up your process of your CNC time. And like, that's why they're originally invented. Like I think Lazy Boy recliners, 
you know, all the furniture that they make, their factory has a whole bunch of roughers that are cutting out all the plywood for the frames of their stuff, right? Because they're gonna last a long time. We go through about $50,000 of bits a year in my industrial CNC shop. And whenever we kind of caught on to how roughers work, it saved us a ton of time because the flaw behind roughers, they do leave tiny little lines wherever those serrations are at. Now on this eighth inch bit, they're so small that you can't even see them. And so really it's honestly quite a clean pass with this eighth inch rougher, right? I mean like super good there. But whenever you go up to the quarter inch and the three eighths roughers, you're gonna have these little lines. So to show you what I mean about the serrations, I'm gonna run this golden boy through this walnut in a single pass. And then we'll talk about some things that I do in my industrial shop and on my hobby CNC's to work with these roughing bits to help speed up that time and extend the tool life. And before I press go on this, if you are getting value from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any of our roughers and if you like them so the audience that does not know about them can learn from you guys. Thanks. Look at that, one pass. I think we went at, what do we got, 150 inches a minute? Something like that. So if you notice these serrations right here aren't that big and if you're sanding, you can just sand them right off. But if you do want that extra clean finish on the edges of your material that you're cutting out or you're pocketing, here's what I suggest do. I would do a roughing pass like we just did and then I'm gonna take this out, put in a finisher, and actually go in 0.02 of an inch, right? And so let me take this out, go in 0.02 of an inch, and we're gonna do a finishing pass, and it's gonna take off all of those little tiny serrations that that bit just left and give you a crystal clean finish. And because I am doing that, the rougher is doing most of the work, and once again, it lasts a lot longer because of the serrations and that finisher which gets, which gets duller quicker, just like a kitchen knife, it doesn't have to do much cutting. It's really just scratching and taking away those serrations. So in this way, you're now using a bit that lasts twice as long as other bits, if not three times as long, and just using the finisher to do a little bit of cleanup work. And so your sanding time goes down a lot because you always have really nice clean edges and not a lot of those frizzies and tear outs that happen whenever that finisher gets dull. So let's pop that finisher in and get to cutting. All right, as you can see, the finisher came by and did a really nice job of cleaning everything up, took off those serrations. We did have a tad bit of tear out right here because a finisher on ingrain walnut like that typically does have a little bit of tear out. But overall, the finisher did its job. It's going to last a long time. And the roughers did their job and they did their job really, really fast. All right, so that finisher just finished up. It did its thing, but as you can see, the con of those roughers is the fact that they are rough and leave that rough edge. And if you've been sticking around this long in the video, I do have a surprise cut for you. We're about to take our quarter inch Golden Boy XL, which has an inch and a half cutting length, and go all the way through this piece of material right here, which is just an old treated two by six that I stubbed my toe on earlier, so I feel like killing it even more and cutting it in half. So that's another thing that I do like roughers for is that really long depth of cut where they don't get jammed up like sometimes those finishers do. And so this is going to max out the bit and we're going to cut all the way through this two by six here just coming up in a second. Now those other things that I like the roughers for inside the shop or of course pocketing because as you can tell, we made quick work of this Bamex pocketing down with those quarter inch roughers. And then we made quick work of this walnut right here pocketing down with that eighth inch baby boy. So whether you're profiling, pocketing, or cutting really deep, the roughers are pretty much good for everything. We use this three eighths rougher in our shop cutting through cornhole boards actually. So we'll cut 
almost all the way through a 18 millimeter or three quarter Baltic birch, running this thing at around 600 inches a minute, six to 700 inches a minute, and we'll leave that onion skin, then we'll come back by with a quarter inch finisher and clean everything up. So no matter what size you have, whether it's a 3 8 the quarter inch or the eighth inch rougher, they're all gonna do really, really good. So now, moment you've been waiting for, let's take this two by six on. All right, so as we had that piece of two by six ready to cut, my dad actually walked by Pops and um, said he needed it. So he gave us this two by four to cut in half instead and so I just have a simple diag diagonal cut we're gonna do. And I'm not gonna try to overload the spindle because we could run this thing at three quarter inch deep, you know, 250 inches a minute, 300 inches a minute, but it does have the chance to overload the spindle since this is still a hobby CNC. And so we're just gonna take it nice and slow, but this should show you the cutting capabilities of this rougher. Let's go. There we go. Just quickly cut in half that two by four. I don't know, pretty simple cut here, but it does show you how deep that thing can get. But I do wanna warn you, you do not wanna run that thing wide open like I was doing on those shorter cutting length bits because they do have a little bit more deflection and can scream more and can break. So if you do get the XL, which I highly recommend, be sure you're babying it, just a little bit more babying it like you would a finisher just so you have those nice clean cuts. Now guys, I hope you check out the eighth inch, the quarter inch, or the three eighths version of these ruffers. We do have them in an up cut and a down cut. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.